Welcome back. My name is Tundra Vimala and uh, thank you for joining our third show. Uh, we have a guest speaker today and that's uh, Mega, Megan uh, Scott. Is that right? Megan Bishop, Bishop Scott. Scott. And so uh, Megan has come to the ashram and uh, she's a writer but she's also worked with uh, a lot of group homes and uh, so working with youth through that and so it's uh, it's exciting for you to be with us, so thank you very much for joining. Oh, so, thanks for inviting me. Uh, so we've had a, a lot of emails, and thank you so much for sending it. Uh, we're really excited about being able to touch base and uh, being able to kind of answer your questions, and so it's really exciting for us that uh, we're bringing kind of information and being able to, you know, give you some uh, mm -hmm. some discussions around kind of what your questions are mm -hmm. and some answers around them. So, uh, so what uh, I pulled today was around self-esteem and uh, self. -confidence. Confidence. So there was quite a few questions around that, mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, and it's always tough around youth, you know, around that time, yeah. especially around peer time and that, which I'm sure you found kind of from your mm -hmm. group home too. Did you want to tell a little bit about what your work was with the group home and, and um, basically what I was doing was um, initially writing like histories for foster kids so mm -hmm. that they would know why they had all these self-esteem issues and why they didn't have confidence and it was usually based in their background something that had happened in the family and um, as a result of that I started teaching meditation to these teens at risk who actually were at the end of the line and were in danger of literally falling through cracks if something didn't happen to them mm -hmm. and the great thing about <coughs> talking to them was even the ones who seemed like they were the group leader and the, the most self-assured guy in the house was the one with just as many insecurities as everyone else. So mm -hmm. the illusion that someone has it together is flawed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no one has it together. Yeah. 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 And um, it was great getting these kids to talk about it because then when they realized they were like everyone else, it, a lot of those problems vanished mm -hmm. because they thought they were the only one who was messed up, mm -hmm. the only one who had problems. And when they found out everyone came from the same thing, just depend on who had a better mask on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's kind of uh, from one of our shows that, you know, when I did research around that, that, you know, we always think that youth are always wanting to speak with their peers. And uh, that was completely opposite. Uh, yeah. And uh, they didn't want to speak, you know. And, and you can kind of, when you start to think about it, you know, that, you know, if they say something, you know, they they may be laughed at or yeah. may not, you know, be included anymore. And so mm -hmm. it's sometimes a risky thing of touching base. So it's being held in and yeah. you know, a lot of uh, issues can come out of that. So. Uh, uh, which we can kind of say. So I'll start with our first question. Great. And so uh, it's a question from Ravi from Bangalore, so thank you. Uh, I keep beating myself up about not being able to get it done and more pressure from my boss on work. I can't remember anything and I need to kind of uh, work for my projects. Uh, so more pressure is being put upon me. Uh, parents keep saying they don't understand what the problem is, that, you know, just get it done. Like, why is it just mm. you know, that you're having trouble with your projects and remembering things? So, uh, Ravi is saying, I'm just really stuck and I don't know what to do. Well, one thing that um, a lot of people don't understand is a key um, sign of a samskara is fuzzy thinking. Mm -hmm. So when you are suffering from an engram, when you've got an emotional blow that you've taken in the past and you haven't resolved it, mm -hmm. it results in clouded thinking. So being in a pressurized situation and b getting mad at yourself because there's no clarity, it just gets fuzzier and fuzzier. Mm -hmm. It's because you it has triggered an old emotion in you, an old pain. Mm -hmm. and not only the meditation helps but that's where heavy yoga helps because doing a physical activity will actually punch these things out mm -hmm. and so rather than getting caught in the trap of going round and round why aren't I better why aren't I better you know concentrate concentrate and you know beating yourself up just going and doing something heavy physical you know doing some sun salutations mm -hmm. doing something it's amazing the clarity that will come from that because you'll move that emotion out and you know there are other techniques that are business related but the first thing that I realized in my own past was fuzzy thinking was because of something old mm -hmm. that I had to get rid of. 
Well, and our thoughts, you know, are with our actions. So the more that we struggle, the more we're bringing in, like, struggles. Yeah. And so that's just a constant thing of our thoughts. And when we have those kind of negative thoughts, it impacts our action. And so yeah. all of a sudden we're frozen and we can't really think of things. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of being able to reverse that thinking that, you know, uh, I'm able to do this. And, yeah. you know, things will be really good and I'm going to really enjoy And I'm going to make some mistakes and that's okay. Mm -hmm. you know, I'll just be able to step and stop back for a few minutes, you know, yeah. and take a break or... You know, it is really good to do activity, and you know, we'll talk more about kind of meditations as well. Right. But uh, we are, you know, where the struggle gets caught into the struggle. Mm -hmm. So uh, it just kind of makes that circle bigger. And so, uh, and kind of, I think we get into that bigger picture. You know, we see projects, we see things, and you know, we don't right. uh, step back to take it into little pieces, mm. which makes it workable. You know, we're all yeah. of a sudden, well, I can make it kind of more workable. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we worked on kind of, um, uh, it's kind of a big whiteboard. And we started to do uh, sticky notes and so mm. we separated it out per day like what I needed to do from right. 10 to 11 or 11 to 12 and mm -hmm. sticky notes are easy to move around so at 10 it's not that important I can move that to this yeah. afternoon and all of a sudden it's like I'm doable like I can do that within an hour mm -hmm. you know I can do that within you know but we get yeah. stuck looking at kind of this whole big picture and right I know how to start uh, the so panic attack the panic attack yeah and so uh yeah because you know Stom Swami just says you know again like you know just like you said the constant struggling is done caught into the struggling mm -hmm. so uh, we just kind of get into that bad cycle yeah and then you know every workplace has people crying in the bathroom like it's it's not unusual for that stress to just mm -hmm. get out of control mm -hmm. yeah and then Swamiji kind of talked around uh, what we call gibberish uh, meditation, and I mm. found that really helpful. Yeah. Well, what gibberish meditation is, is really that, you know, it's not about making words, it's about actually that gibberish. Mm -hmm. And finding a place where, you know, people don't hear you, and you spend 10 minutes of just going blah, 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 blah. Yeah, blah. I love that one. It just <laughs> gets it out, you know, because it's all yeah. stuck inside. Well, and you stomp your feet and you wave your hands, mm -hmm. so it's a great release. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, it's uh, the one thing I love about you know what Swamiji says too that when we feel that it just you know we're alive and we're actually putting ourselves out there to do specific yeah. things. And so you know, it's uh, we're not you know dull and we're not like sitting and not doing anything. Mm -hmm. So it's a beautiful thing that you're feeling this because it just means you're putting yourself out there, right? And that your boss and other people see that in you, and it's so it's kind of building that kind of mm -hmm. if they see it. Then you know, again, we have to look within ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I hope that answers your question, and if we don't, uh, please, you know, write back in and, uh, you know, we'll continue to kind of mm -hmm. work on that. But you'll find that some of the questions are a little bit, you know, similar, and so, you know, hopefully we'll kind of continue to kind of answer some of those questions as well. Right. So uh, the next one was from uh, Naveen from Delhi. And she said, uh, I'm having really trouble accepting myself. Uh, I always look at my mm. friends and think, why am I not like them? Yeah. Uh, and do you think if I change the way I look, it'll help others accept me? That's sad. <laughs> um, what I found interesting going through school was I f felt like I was the strangest person in school and mm. I didn't fit with any group and I didn't dress like them and I had the exact same reaction and now I'm considered the most unique person from my graduating class and people look up to me and yet I spent the whole time wondering why I wasn't more like them mm. so it it is a very hard time in life mm. like I'm I'm not gonna try and make it easier than it is like the fact that anyone survives school is astounding to me <laughs> because it's the most pressure you're stepping out as an individual for the first time you're constantly judging yourself mm -hmm. and you know don't change how you look like mm -hmm. Swamiji loves how unique we are mm -hmm. loves that every single person that comes in front of him is amazing looking and that um, Bhakta Swami even reminded us um, when we were talking about the possibility of a reality show being filmed here and they were talking about the look of people who would be on the show and he said everybody's beautiful mm -hmm. and it was a really good reminder that um, you have your own quality so please don't change what that is and that's you know exactly that, that we are very unique and that mm -hmm. every single person is brought down here and uh, uh, I always like to say that, uh, you know, even for our fingerprints, there's not one that's identical. Yeah. And there's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. Even twins. And you'd always think twins maybe have, like, you know, that, yeah. uh, uh, you know, the same fingerprint or that. Yeah. There's not one in the world. 
Mm -hmm. so it's, it's saying, you know, that you are unique, and yeah. uh, and it's exciting time. And I know that it's a, a difficult time, but it's yeah. such an exciting time because you're finding yourself. Mm -hmm. And so trying out different things and just, you know, what's going to happen is people are going to start being attracted to who you really are. Yeah. And then that will start to be building kind of your friendships. So uh, it's just a beautiful time and I, uh, that, you know, you start to kind of blossom on uh, kind of who you are. Yeah. And uh, the other piece that I really loved about what Swamiji said, you know, if we were supposed to be like everybody else, then that would be how we would be created. And so it would be like a car factory. And so yeah. it's just kind of like tum to tum to tum And, uh, you know, we have a Brad Pitt and Angie Jolie, and, have, you know, we just kind of keep making them, and they just keep moving along. Right? Brad number 5,000. Brad number 5,000. <laughs> Stamp. <laughs> not really. Right? <laughs> That's right. But it's true. Like, not... You know, it's yeah. not the way it's supposed to be when we're here. And mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, just really enjoy, have fun, and uh, kind of start to, yeah. you know, explore different p places of yourself. And, you know, if you love something like dance, then you're going to start attracting people that are like dancing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, you, if you like books, you're going to start attracting people about books. And, and actually, that's, it's really interesting to read biographies of people you admire, because I guarantee you that the most... Uh, successful prominent people in the world had that insecurity in mm -hmm. school like they were usually the the strange one or the one that didn't fit in like you rarely find someone who was in the pack mm -hmm. you know and the most popular who then went on to really make it mm -hmm. you so know look at like bill gates and like all of them they yeah the real like, original you know, ones call, you know, uh, johnny are, depp yeah. you know a lot of the people we admire didn't fit in mm -hmm. didn't look like anybody else mm -hmm. So, you know, sort of like you say, um, celebrate that uniqueness in yourself. Yeah. And you don't know how many people are wishing they look like you. <laughs> you know, so. and that's really true. We always think that, uh, but other people are also looking at us going, oh, I wish that you yeah. could. And, you know, that's yeah. where uh, I wish that, that there is more talking because, you know, working with youth. Uh, I've found that a lot of people say the same thing. Mm -hmm. and sometimes I put them all in. I used to work at a school, right? And yeah. so everybody would be saying about this about everybody else, and I'm like, this is insane. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so like, I went into the school, and I said, yeah. you know, everyone's talking about everyone else, saying, you know, I wish that I was like her, and I wish I was like that. Yeah. You know, and. So it ended up like the whole school was pointing at other people. And well, and the funniest thing in the world is the first class reunion. You know, mm -hmm. you go to your high school 10 years later and everyone is finally talking. And they're like, I always thought you had it together. Well, I always thought you had it together. And, you, and everyone just laughs mm -hmm. because all of that was just an illusion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So enjoy yourself. Find out, you know, all the things that you want yeah. to do and, uh, you know, start to blossom and you will start attracting people that will be the same. And so, uh, yeah. you know, just really enjoy that kind of and, period of time. And make sure, you know, if some of that insecurity is coming from your family, like I know my mother was very critical and she was trying to help me come into my own. Mm -hmm. But what it was was constantly criticizing every single thing I put on or the way I had my hair. And so I was very rattled every time I walked out of the house. Mm -hmm. I, I felt like I didn't look good enough. So it's tricky disconnecting from criticism of brothers or sisters or yeah, family. family. probably is one of the hardest. Yeah. Because no matter what, you know, your parents are your parents or your family is your family. Yeah. And so those things are really difficult. But, you know, I always like to say to uh, young people is that they're people too. And what's happened is that, you know, they have their own sons, Carlos. You know, and so yeah. um, they have had their parents say probably the same thing as they <laughs> found, right? Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, just parenthood is not easy. And right. So a lot of times it's just that they don't, they're just following through with what a parent has done and, mm. and generation has done. Yeah. And uh, so they just kind of automatically do things. And I think, you know, if we sat down with them, which I have, <laughs> they don't really know why they're doing that. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just they have some guilt or the parent has kind of done that. And mm -hmm. I know, like, my father did that. Like, you know, they come from very strong German, you know, Danish oh, background. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, everything was never good enough. Like, you have to do 200%. Yeah. And even then, like, could you have done a little bit, like, better, right? And, uh, you know, when I kind of sat down with him, you know, as he got older, he says, I don't really know why I did that. Yeah. Just because that's what my dad did. And, I mean, they had, like, you know, raising kids and everything mm -hmm. else. And, you know, so it's all of a sudden, like, 
yeah, I don't know. It's just something that my you do what's did. familiar, not yeah, what's right. I did my father. Yeah. So, uh, and so it's just kind of starting to step back to say, you know, they're people too, mm -hmm. and they're trying. And sometimes it's out of kind of ignorance that they're yeah they're doing that. So uh, it's kind of sometimes giving a break and then being able to just kind of step back and look within yourself. And I know that one can be probably one of the hardest mm -hmm. uh, kind of from family members. So. But that's why, you know, it's it's a great age to be meditating. Mm -hmm. It really is because it it locks you into your core. My son is multiracial and so he doesn't look like anybody and in school that could have been a real problem and he's he'd always meditated and so he just would, oh well, you know, it was amazing to me that he didn't let it get to him. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, all I can attribute it to was that he meditated. Well, that's really true, like the meditation and activity. When you spend time with yourself and just kind of being kind of calm within yourself, and mm -hmm. so it, it's easier, you know, yeah. to say, okay, you know, this is where I am. And we've got all bumpy roads. It doesn't change in youth, right. it changes in all our life that, you know, we continue to have that. Yeah. So it just kind of settles you enough to just say, you know what, this is where I am right now. And, and that's just okay. Well, the, the analogy my son had was we're all on the same whitewater rafting trip. Mm -hmm. It's when you're meditating, you're in the boat with a life jacket on. If you're not meditating, you're in the water next to the boat. Oh, like well. we're all going on the same trip, mm -hmm. but at least the meditation meditation gets you in the boat. Yeah, with a life jacket. With a life jacket. <laughs> It's a little easier. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really true. I've always thought of that, you know, that we're going down the river and like we've got rocks. And yeah, like you can't us, avoid it. All of us do. Yeah. And so those rocks can be fears and worries and like all of that. Yeah. And uh, when you're in like the boat with the life jacket, you're going to go over, but mm -hmm. you're not going over when your body is going through it. And so, yeah. so uh, that's r truly what meditation and kind mm -hmm. of, uh, the activity, like if it's walking or, you know, out and, and, and laughing. I really believe that yeah. it yeah. really does. Uh, yeah. Remember to uh, cut yourself a break and break. yeah, so have fun. <laughs> yeah, your son's smart. That's a, that's a good thing. Uh, and uh, so we have a question from Anita, and she's in Vancouver, and that's Canada. Mm. Uh, so she said uh, to please help me. Uh, I just all I only think about is my failures and anything mm. uh, that I succeed. It's the failures that take over. Mm. I always feel that everyone is so much more competent and uh, confident than me, which we talked a little bit yeah. about. Uh, and I always now avoid new challenges because of that. Uh, and wow. I had a time where someone was really laughing at me and that just really closed me uh, up. So, yeah. you know, how do I start kind of getting back to respecting myself and not... I remember up? reading um, a long time ago, someone said that 99% of our the things our mind tells us are from something it's heard. Mm -hmm. So most of the chatter going on in our brains is from fathers, mothers, teachers, friends, the news, the TV, and so when your mind is just left to run amok, it does that. Mm -hmm. Oh no, that wasn't good enough. Oh no, that wasn't, like it just, it's non-stop chatter and it's rarely true. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's where Teaching it to be quiet, it's like, they say it's like training a wild monkey, you know. Teaching it to just be quiet, because all it's doing is repeating what it's heard. Mm -hmm. It's not coming, Einstein knew that his mind wasn't coming up with his scientific theories. When he emptied his mind, he knew it was coming in from a higher source, like he was plugging into the cosmos. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the greatest brains, theoretically, of our time. So when you're constantly getting that criticism going, it really isn't true. It's something else is doing that chatter, but um, you have to make it stop. And I've literally sat down and, and yelled at my mind mm -hmm. and like, stop it, stop it, shut up, shut up, you know, because you don't need that. You don't need that constant, that wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're not, I'm not going to do it right. I'm not, you know, just make it stop, mm -hmm. you know, because it's not you. Or just let it flow through too. Like I've done where mm. I want stop, stop, and I feel like pressure sometimes. Sometimes oh, okay. it stops. Right. I go stop, and it does. <laughs> and other yeah. times it just goes blah, 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 right. And so right. sometimes I'm like, okay, like, you know, so what? Like I've done mm. that failure. And, I just and that's where the gibberish, and the gibberish and gibberish. meditation would be good. Uh, yeah. And I just remind everyone, we're all human beings, and every single person makes mistakes. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you know, uh, has, you know, yeah. people have been locked up before or, you know, difficulties. And so mm -hmm. everyone has. And 
and uh, a lot of times we have that body language or you know sometimes you know we're pulling that towards us so yeah. sometimes you know when we have that where we're looking down or you know we're just kind of not sure of ourselves that kind of increases the chance of people yeah. making kind of that laughter or things that are happening so mm -hmm. you know I've always said to you you know even if you don't feel that inside like mm -hmm. make sure that your body language is like standing straight and that you're looking at people yeah. and you know even though you may be just devastated inside that someone's right. laughed uh, just you know shrug it off and uh, it's okay if you go off somewhere and you don't have a cry or whatever mm -hmm. but, you know just have that confidence within yourself when you're doing that but yeah everyone does and what's exciting is that you know how are you going to learn like it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of like getting into a plane like if you get into a plane that you've never flown before yeah and i'm gonna say fly <laughs> take <laughs> off and go and it's like yeah. You know, we, we can't do that. I mean, there's some things that we may have some natural ability. Right. We might be able to go and that. Mm -hmm. The majority of the time, we need some training. We need to learn. We have to try different things out in order to yeah. allow the, the plane to take off. Yeah. And uh, that means that, you know, we're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And that's going to have some, you know, but... Yeah, you're gonna learn. Okay, I can't do that. I have to go there. Well, the most um, famous photographers say that for every great award-winning shot, there's a thousand shots mm -hmm. that were taken or in and around that one photo mm -hmm. that were cr horrible. Yeah, they were just crap. Mm -hmm. And but the one showed up, and they didn't beat themselves up about the 999 bad ones. Mm -hmm. They went eureka. <laughs> and that is true. Like, <laughs> you, know, you can do like 45 minutes of picture and you ain't get one picture out of it. So, uh, and that's, yeah. that's really true. So right? celebrate your successes and then don't beat yourself up mm -hmm. over the rest of it. And don't stop trying. Like, mm -hmm. Just keep trying. Just keep trying. Because yeah. everybody else is like I said, the same. Yeah, so, uh, exactly. Yeah. Good. Uh, uh, the next one was from Divya from My Shore, and she mm -hmm. said, uh, it's kind of a little similar to, uh, we've had a lot kind of around being around successful people, and uh, they feel kind of, this one is a lot about, about really feeling worthless. Oh. And so, uh, and why do I feel so worthless when I have kind of someone that's successful of the same? Mm. Well, and again, as Swamiji said, that's too much looking out. Mm instead of looking in, you know, we can constantly compare ourselves and find ourselves falling short. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not beautiful enough, I'm not an Olympic athlete, I'm not, like, you can always find somebody that you're not as good as in a, in a field. Um, and I think Swamiji just, just recommends stop comparing yourself. Mm -hmm. Just stop it. Don't, you know, if you meet somebody who's successful, um, if anything, um, celebrate their success. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people are get jealous and sort of weird around a successful person. Well, you know, I'm sure I could do that if I had the time or, you know, they go into a weird mode. Whereas if you just, you know, congratulations, you know, that's, mm -hmm. and you'll find that, you know, most of the intimidating people I've met when I just sort of was myself and said, wow, congratulations, I love the way, you know, this happened or I love your work or, mm -hmm. and they start talking to you and you find it's just a regular person. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they'll just turn around and start mentoring you. Mm -hmm. They will open doors for you be if you're interested in their field. So, yeah, don't let that be a barrier between meeting their being. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, really true, you know, I've learned lots, like, you know, obviously from school that I kind of had that myself, and mm -hmm. I've always struggled with um, some learning disability, and uh, dyslexia is a little bit that it's hard for the sound. Dyslexia? Okay. Yeah, because it sounds in the <laughs> <different> language. Uh, <laughs> I can't say it. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, it's always been something where you see someone talking. Yeah. And Maybe you know, just I've explain for a second what, because that's a very common thing, dyslexia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just that, uh, well, everything is a little bit different, but, you know, it's uh, the sounds that I have trouble with language, okay. especially with mine. Sometimes the words and numbers reverse for me. Mm. Um, so those of you out there who have that going on with you, it is a, actually a mm -hmm. condition that can be worked with. So uh, yeah. me sitting in front of a camera is something that's, uh, <laughs> so, uh, but you know, how are you going to? You keep trying, right? yeah. And, uh, yeah. and it does get better. It just takes a little bit more work for me. And then, you know, but some other things, you know, it's a little bit faster. And everyone has that. Yeah. You always are going to find something that you're a little bit quicker at. And mm -hmm. other things, you know, like for me, this just takes a lot of 
work. But, you know, I really found, you know, I was, and I never knew I was never, you know, diagnosed until much later out of school. Yeah. So, um, but, uh, and, you know, I'd always kind of think, you know, uh, here I'm mumbling and I can't speak and, you know, yeah. I have all this going on in my brain and that. But, you know, so I kind of just felt very, you know, didn't have a lot of worthiness sometimes. And so, but later on, you know, as I grew up, it was just like if the person that was there, you know, they had, you know, problems at home and one had, you know, tried to commit suicide. And, yeah. you know, there's, again, like everybody has something that's going yeah. on. And so yeah. I learned later on to say, you know what, they have a talent in this. I want to learn from them. Mm. And so, just like what you said, uh, you know, yeah. and if you're not, you know, keep yourself safe. You, you got to know who that is and who you can trust. Yeah. Right. So if somebody is, you know, where you know that they're going to, you know, uh, say something about you, or they're not going to be respectful, or they're not going to, you know, mm -hmm. do that piece, then you know, don't approach. But there's lots of people right. out there that, let's say, if for this, let's say, let's public speaking. You know, someone's right. speaking. There's lots of people out there. You know, or even like you know, a, a peer, mm -hmm. or you know, uh, you know. A family member or whatever, yeah. you know, that can kind of guide you on how to, and it's all learning, you yeah. know, all of us have learned, you know, how to lead your talk, is just, you know, from trying things out, uh, I use the mirror a lot, and so just mm -hmm. like looking at the mirror and being able to kind of, you know, work on that, but, yeah. you know, it's all of that, so there's lots of people out there that can kind of help you, you know, with mm -hmm. that. But just remember that everybody has difficulties in different areas of their life and, yeah. you know, so it's just either learn or, you know, uh, but yeah. we are all very unique and, you know, Swamiji, like you said, talked about that. Everyone has their own kind of ways and so sometimes he may be speaking to another person and, you know, mm -hmm. another person may feel left out, but, you know, it's just those moments where people, you know, need the assistance and yeah. you know, another person might not and we may not see that and so it's the same in kind of school, you know, that we mm -hmm. work through kind of just that yeah and so know. when you're up against this or you know in contact with a successful person just sort of open and think what can I learn from this person mm -hmm. instead of going all that you know mm -hmm. just wow I wonder what I could learn from this person they've learned they've got a key to an element you know and uh, just recently too Swamiji has been talking about uh, a lot of like rewiring the brain and so mm -hmm. it's kind of the round the same with the thoughts and the actions that happen yeah you know about and even if it feels really uncomfortable it's kind of reversing it and doing I'm worthy mm. and sitting there yeah. and just feeling that bliss and saying I'm worthy I'm worthy starts to actually your your brain can get rewired and so mm -hmm. that's kind of your DNA yeah. and so there's lots of research out there now that that's actually can be happening because you continue right. to say that to yourself your whole body everything gets taken in that I'm unworthy I'm unworthy I'm unworthy yeah so reverse it and like I said, it, it may feel really uncomfortable, and honestly, that's what I did, you know, mm -hmm. when I was in high school, when I was struggling with things, and then all of a sudden, it was just, I started to feel this beautiful energy come through, and, you know, nice. I just thought, it's okay, like, you know, wherever I'm at, you know, I never yeah. really kind of had a specific friend, I kind of was friends with a lot of everyone, and so, yeah. uh, I just felt, oh, that's okay. Like mm -hmm. you don't have to be like that and so yeah then the more that I kind of sat with myself and continued to do that you know it just blossomed more and more and I just felt really good you know about myself yeah so that's a great and it is it's rewiring and uh, and you were looking in the mirror and sort of because that's a great technique looking in the mirror and going you know no one's got those eyes yeah. no one's got that great you know those shoulders are going to carry me and yeah. yeah making yourself look at yourself and yeah, and that's what yeah. I, you know, taught a lot of the young people. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize, like, their body language, you know, was a lot of slumped, and they'd look down like this. And, you know, a lot of times, uh, it's, I don't know, it's kind of a little bit like human nature, is that, you know, mm. they kind of this pick on uh, yeah. that. They pick it's up a pack really mentality. Quick. I don't know if sometimes yeah. that's even conscious, but they do pick up on it. Yeah. And so if, you know, you're standing straight and you're looking straight at people and you're like this, then they're like, why bother? Yeah. If they don't get a reaction. Not a target. What's the fun? <laughs> and not that I mean that they're wanting to even maybe have fun. Yeah. That, but, you know, that can just be what's happening. So conscious. Yeah. They just don't bother anymore <laughs> because, you know, they can't see a reaction. Yeah. So uh, it's just yeah. kind of working through that. So, yeah. Uh, so this one's kind of, I think, very similar as well. The Rupa is from Malaysia. And uh, so she just said that uh, I pretend now to be someone else. And I think mm. we've kind of talked that, uh, but I don't feel really good inside. And she doesn't really understand why, because now she's got tons of friends and she's got mm. tons of changes that are in her life. 
you know, everything is really good. She's been out, you know, partying. She's got lots of people that yeah. are calling her. You know, she's just never been as busy, you know, compared to what her life was. Right. So, but she's feeling really empty inside. And so she doesn't mm. really understand why that's happening. And that's just the lack of a, a connection with her spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times it's the last thing we remember to kick into gear. You know, we do the body, we do the mind, and then remembering to connect with your spirit. Um, that's the emptiness. Mm -hmm. That's just not knowing who you are inside. And even, you know, 10 minutes of silence a day is going to fill that, start filling that emptiness up. You know, so she's taking care of all the external now. She just needs to connect inside. The um, analogy I gave to a lot of the foster kids was that life's like a video game. Mm -hmm. And this is the controller, and when you meditate, you plug the controller into the game console. And if you don't meditate, you're not plugged in. And that results in emptiness and a feeling of no control over what's going on. Everyone else is running around the game. You're not running around the game, or you're not in control of what's happening in the game with you. Mm -hmm. And so I think she's at the stage of the game where, like when you do any of these online games, you, first you create your persona. So you create the look and the tools and the skills you're going to have. And then you hit start and it starts running. So she's got all that done, but she hasn't got her soul into that being yet. So it's the same outside here. She just needs to get herself established in herself. And again, you know, 10 minutes of silence every day mm -hmm. would start locking her into herself. And I got a little sense that too that uh, she's changing for other people. Mm. And so the reason of that emptiness is that it's not what she really she's wants. She's not to authentic. Do. Yeah, she's not yeah. being who she is. And, yeah. you know, looking back at my life, it's just that I have like one friend from like high school mm. junior high. like you know you'll find that as you grow you're going to change your friends and you're going to be changing many things yeah. and so if you follow continually outside you're going to just constantly be in a circle because mm -hmm. somebody will always want something different from you yeah because you know it's easy for someone right i can just say oh megan can you do this and that and then yeah. i go off into my life right yeah and so it's you that has to you know say okay i have to change this and i have to change mm. that you've got somebody else coming and saying oh well no megan i think that you know you should be doing this and you're like oh i better be you know uh, more funny and so yeah be more funny and then someone comes and says you know you're being a little bit you know this way i think you should be you know a little more, bit serious. more serious about <laughs> yeah. and you're fine like you know in life you're just going to be constantly circling yeah. and uh, what happens is that you know really gets into depression and mm -hmm. really uh, deep unhappiness and then disconnect on like your true self well not remembering who how you're supposed to behave with which people mm -hmm. starts to get so you know the best thing is like Swamiji says get rid of all the masks mm -hmm. just be who you are and then the ones that stay with you are true friends like they will be with you f through anything mm -hmm. I know popularity could be really, you know, something that mm -hmm. somebody wants. I mean, but uh, it's being kind of popular in your own group. I think we yeah. started to kind of talk a little bit. So, uh, but you know, it's just being able to, like you said, be connecting within your own, your own self. Yeah. Exactly. And that's kind of the same. That uh, John and Jeremy did the same kind of, uh, same kind of question. That mm. Kind of as we had our discussion, kind of talked a little bit about. So. Uh, so hopefully um, that you've gotten something, you know, that we've uh, talked about in relation to self-confidence mm -hmm. and that, uh, you know, please, you know, write in if, you know, things you wanted a little bit more information or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we really do, like I said, appreciate it. And, you know, that's what self-esteem is. It's really being within yourself. That's, you know, uh, worthy of yourself. And you have to grow it. It's, it, we're probably born with it, but then it gets stripped away because of, all the things going on so it really is something you have to work on putting back in yourself mm -hmm. but and you can bring it back process. yeah you know I continue to do that myself yeah. where you know I'm looking at something and then I'm thinking you know I got to come back to who I am and mm -hmm. build, you know that and uh, that's just going to blossom so yeah. you know it's a life process and so it's just giving yourself a break mm -hmm. enjoying and having a laugh upon something and uh, yeah and lighten up just yeah. lighten up it's and, uh, yeah. but also that you know we are here to like kind of assist and you know find you know uh you know swamiji of course has guided us in a great yeah. great way and so you know 
he's a you know a young enlightened master, and that's the beauty mm -hmm. you know, that uh, so many young people have been attracted just because of that. And uh, you know, you, into technology and YouTube, and you know, he just yeah. really understands what's happening in today's society, and for young people, and for you know all people. So yeah. we are really kind of blessed to to have him in our life. But uh, yeah. you know, definitely make sure that you're connecting with someone that uh, you know it's a little bit you know older as well that can kind of help guide you because life can get a little confusing. And uh, yeah. it's nice to have someone with some experience to be able to kind of help you out a little bit and kind of what their experiences well, are. Well, and he does recommend stepping back a bit. Even though he uses technology, he doesn't let it run him. And mm -hmm. to he's even told us recently in the last few days to step back from the technology. Don't be listening to the news, mm -hmm. watching so much TV because it's constantly telling you you're not worthy, well, you're not pretty enough. Business. Yeah, it just is always hitting you in the head. You know, you're not this, you're not this, you're not this. Mm -hmm you have to buy this or you're not going to be popular so you'll find that people who just sort of roam around for days without ever turning on a TV or the internet or anything are very happy people mm -hmm. because they're ju it's just them and existence you know so remember to turn off the electronics once in a while and walk outside <laughs> That's a good that's idea. From one of our shows that you know it came out to about eleven hours, like a day, however that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is a lot of negative. It's mm -hmm. very confusing with what happens on, uh, you know, the media, the movies, uh, the music. I can't believe half of the music yeah. <laughs> videos. And so it's like, who am I supposed to be? Yeah. And uh, so it's uh, and then lots of really negative and uh, so. Uh, yeah. When you're constantly seeing that and you're bombarded by it, uh, you don't realize that that's kind of, it's like rewiring your brain. You mm -hmm. know? Like you're taking in all of these messages. Yeah. And uh, so we're just saying, you know, please, you know, start to cut back from that. Yeah. Uh, you know, that it's not. Uh, these you know, messages are not coming from enlightened beings. They're coming from flawed, neurotic people. <laughs> so just remember the source of all this media input. You know, it's not true just because you saw it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, good. Well, thank Excellent. you very much for that was uh, great. us. <laughs> and uh, so join us uh, for our next show on Thursday. And thank you uh, for joining us. Okay. Okay.